Hello there and welcome back to Let's Play The Legend of Heroes Trails in the Skies second chapter. I am the Orange Genius, but you may call me Eric, and we left off in Gransel. We just got done with a prologue and creeping shadows have come starting to look over liberal. I don't know how to say this, we haven't even gotten into the first plot a bit. We are partnered up with a gate now, as you can probably tell. We could have had a choice between Charizard and a gate. I wonder if you had chosen uh, Charizard, you would still go to Ruin. Most likely. I don't think you would go to Roland. That would be very cool. That would ma make this a very interesting game, though. If you have chosen Charizard play, uh, in your playthrough or have seen it other way or, uh, at, a, at some other place, I would definitely be interested to know what the what this choice actually does, if, if this impacts anything. Besides, let's look at the equip he has. He has Metal Spikes, Defense 40, that is better than my Reinforced Boots. Um, he has a Fiber Vest, also by 25 points better than my Vest, and a Claymore. Which is a very large si of a very large size. What I like very much is that he already starts out with a bunch of, uh, with a bunch of Quartz. He has seal, which equals, uh, which adds up for uh, three times fire crystals. Seal enemy crafts with 100 per, uh, one, uh, with 10 percent success. I w my, the thought crossed my mind that these were the the uh, quartz that I actually left him out with uh, on my pl previous playthrough, but I kind of doubt that. I probably stripped them of all of his quartz. Because I didn't play as him. And he has attack 1, which equals to, uh, to one more fire. And I think with her I have no attack 1. Oh man, the other red one that I had left off with... Um, you know who then. Oh! That's all the stuff that Analyze, uh, Analyze had equipped. Never mind, we got it back. Okay, I'm happy. I am a happy cappy about that one. Um, we have TR. I like calling it TR because I can imagine that probably somebody's really unhappy about me calling it TR. TR, and that thought kind of. <laughs> I'm a jerk face. That's uh, what you should remember. Combine the effects of eagle eye and information. I want this on her actually, and. This is seal. Seal enemy crafts with 10% success. I'm not using um, very many arts with him. I can tell you that. Fireball EX. What does that do? Ooh. That is actually something that I want on Estelle. So I am going to... Take a gate seal away. Remove this. Remove this. Ah, that's also fire quartz only slot. Put attack one here. This is the blue line. Then we will put action here and um, hit here. You'd probably do well with an evade as well. What's this do? Move one gives plus one gold. I don't care about plus one gold because that one gold will, will not do a great, make a great difference happen. Or will it? No. So I'm gonna give you another evade. Agility plus one. Even though mo oh movement goes down. No, I don't want. Ah, of course movement goes down. No move is actually good for him. I want him to get the agility bonus though. Yes. I know this is not exactly the best uh, setup if you want to get good arts, but he has 75 EP and still has double that. So yeah, keep that in mind. I will put seal here now. And... This has very good stats, good stats and good stats. EP cost, max EP plus 3. Wait a second. Arts minus 1%. Agility plus. Arts minus. I'm give, gonna give you HP instead of that. So Estelle gains 
this and now has Fire EX and Forte, which I do not know what it does. Arts Defense, Arts minus 1%, that is fine. Yeah, that's Arts minus 1. And Arts Defense up by a lot. Oh, the AP only go up by 4 if I use this. Alrighty, um... Attack 1... You're fully equipped. What does Forte do? Temporarily boosts strength by fire. Support spell? Seems to be... Uh, temporarily, I don't know how long that goes on for. And strength plus 25%. It's not that good. Like, you'd have to, um, like, imagine the situation. I'm attacking with a gate physically, and I cast uh, this Forte spell on a gate. So, um, I need to hit four times with a gate to get one extra hit in, basically. Another 100% damage would equal up another attack. So, you attack four times, which is virtually five times if you do the math, but you could also just be casting Clock Up and speed increase by 25%, which equals up to the same thing. Okay, you can boost him to Oblivion if you do Forte and then you do Clock Up and then you do this cra crazy thing, but um, these essentially are the same, but this one costs more. It's my type of thinking. Of course, there could be other arguments to be made for it, but it's probably not going to be something I cast very often. Okay, it only costs 14 EP is something I should consider. It only, it only costs 14 EP. Firebolt, a very nice area. M, I, I am a big fan of that. I hope it isn't actually targeting an enemy, but letting me target an area for the spell to go down. But we'll see about that. Apart from that, we still have Mind, Arts plus 3%, I like. And this was time to cast Arts as Cut. Defense 1, I do not truly need. Um, do, do, do. I think I'm about as happy as I'm gonna get with what the, the with the type of things that she has in her orange line activating all her spells now let's look at him again I have this attack one quartz hey, come on can I put anything here no okay then you have evade hit action HP move and attack What's worth more, HP or attack? The attack adds, pl adds plus 10 in there. And the health equals 70 health. But he does have tier if worst comes to worst. I think having him have tier is not that bad a choice. All right. Um, Tactics. Yeah, of course. Uh, character position. A gate. Oh no, I'm. Not, I don't want to run around with a gate at all. But a gate. You are going to be in the front, and Estelle. You are going to go right here. She's still a pretty potent character. If the enemy comes close, I'm still gonna hit the enemy in the face. But um, I want Estelle to be a little further back than a gate. All right, I've done the man. I've done my managing. That's the Queen's airship, sweetie. I mean, I kind of want to ride it too. If we ride the next airship, when will we arrive at size? I wonder. This is my first time riding an airship alone. What? I'm not nervous. Nope, not me. All right. What a strange voice. Do you complain about me going in this? 
What? You wanna do some shopping in town after all? No, I'm good. Let's go to the waiting area over there and get our tickets. Alright, I had to check. I had to check. Ticket purchases are handled in the building nearby. Thank you. Ah, that building. Huh? What's... Woman with glasses. Really? This is why I cannot stand the pompous imperial nobility. And I thought there were limits to how unpleasant a single person could be. Middle-aged man. Ah, you took the words right from my mouth. Tell me why does the Republic even care about the engine, pro engine provision deal? I did not think liberals' internal politics were your plaything. It's a matter of national, no international security, of course. It's only been a decade since Erebonia attempted to annex this innocent little country. It is absolutely unacceptable for a half barbarian, a barbaric nation like yours to lay their hands on such cutting-edge technology. The Republic is a long-standing friend of liberal. We, was, we, we won't stand back and allow something like uh, that will threaten its interests. Long-standing st long friend? Some friends you are. You didn't send them so much as a soldier in the war. You're just pretending to be allies with it when it suits you, while standing back and doing nothing when it doesn't. What did you just... My Lord Ambassador Crana, uh, may I suggest we leave the matter here? We do not wish to bother the other customers. But Muller, we... Is Erebonia basically Germany, or... He's called Miller. Ambassador Crochane, may I ask that you back down as well? This is a debate that, we, uh, that could be handled just as well through the emb embassies. Very well. I can't say I like hearing that from the member of the Imperial military. Still far better than hearing it from that pompous and gluttonous member of the nobility, I suppose. What did you just... Well, gentlemen, if you'll pardon me. That insufferable she-wolf. This is why commoners with, his with no history or tradition are... My lord. Mm, yes, yes. I shall return to the embassy. I trust I can leave the other matters in your hand. As you will, I'm my uh, as you will my lord. Hmm, hiya! Ah, hmm, Estelle, yes. It's been some time since the martial arts competition, I believe. Ha, <laughs> I'm glad you remember. That was one heck of an argument just now, though. Who were those two and why were they going at each other like a cat and dog? The man was the ambassador of the Erebonian Empire to Liberal, Lord Davil Crena. The woman would be the ambassador from the Republic of Calvert, Elsa Cochrane. They head up their respective embassies here in the capital. Oh, I see. Awful damn childish for a couple of ambassadors. Can those two really do their jobs? Gate. I wish I could disagree, honestly. To say that the Arab Empire and the Republic have always been on bad terms would be an understatement at the best of times. And on top of that, those two are, are like oil and water on a personal level. Well, no, the fact that they break into an argument every time they meet shows how similar they are in some ways. Ah, I guess I can see that. Though maybe it's because I walked into the middle of the conversation, but I couldn't understand like half of that. Something about engine provision and liberal internal politics? Hmm. <laughs> ah, sorry, I guess I shouldn't ask. No, I don't mind. It's not really a secret, anyway. The engine, is, uh, the engine in question is actually the latest from your own central factory. Once the design is finalized, sample units are to be provided by your airship company to the Empire and Republic both, but... We, uh, 
bumped into Ambassador Cochrane when we came by to finalize the deals of the de uh, the details of the deal. Oh, I get it. Why the big argument about an engine then? An, or the, an orbital ship's engine is what determines what the ship can really do. Since you can install them in military ships, you usually don't just hand them out like candy. Now I get it. It'd be a real mess if that engine let the Imperial Army get all powered up. Ah, uh, well, I, I, well, I, I mean... Uh, not at all, it's true. Normally sharing such advanced technology with under, uh, other countries so freely would, would be unsinkable, but this is, the, uh, this is a part of your Queen's plan. Rather than monopolizing a technological edge, she wishes to provide it to other countries to promote multinational peace. At least that's her plan as I understand it. I get it, she did mention something like that a little while ago, now that I think about it. Hmm, it's incredible that the Queen is willing to try something like that. Like, it's not just an ideal, you know, it's something that could really change how people negotiate. Yes, you have, a, you have reason to be proud of your, your Queen, I'd say. My apologies, but this conversation has gone on longer than I intended. You're here for air tickets, yes? I'll pardon myself here. Oh, yeah. Say, Müller, about Oliver. Has he gone back to Erebonia already? What? You've not heard? I haven't really had a chance to see him since the Queen's birthday celebrations, actually. I felt kind of bad about that. Oh, don't worry. The ha that half wit is, uh, is continuing to while away his days here in Liberal. He said he was going to visit Elmo Springs, if I remember right. Ah, okay then. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like Oliver, alright. Little disclaimer, I know he's called Olivier. But not in this playthrough. Should he ever bother returning to the embassy like a responsible citizen? Unlikely as that is. I'll let him know you were asking after him. I'll make sure he, ha he at least contacts you before he returns to the Empire. Thanks, Miller. Oddly, I should thank you for keeping that lunatic company. Now, if you'll excuse me. That's one hell of a stiff military type for a friend of that golden-haired guy. Who is he? Miller's the resident, uh, the resident military officer for the Erebonian Embassy, I think. I've only ever met him a few times myself. Mm, well built is he, and he, sh had, uh, he made sure to not leave himself open at any point or in our chat. A well-trained dog of the military and hiding some f sharp fangs to boot. There you go again. He does seem like he's really strong though. Tch, I don't trust any Imperials and that includes Blondie. It seems like he talked to Cassius about something. But who knows what his plan is, w what with staying so long. I guess that is a good point. Although Oliver might be, we might be weird, but I can't think of him as a bad guy. Even Miller doesn't seem as that, uh, seem all that malevolent, I guess. Tch, yeah, whatever. Let's get over, let's get over to the counter and get our tickets. Welcome! Will you be using our national flights or our international flights? A uh, two-ticket bound for ruin, please. Understood. Oh, pardon me. You are with the Bracer Guild, yes? Are you still in the gate? Uh, yes. I have already received payment from Elnin with the Capital Branch. Here you are your tickets. Enjoy your flight. Received two boarding pass. I see, so Elnin did. Nice Elnin, he's always ahead. Well then, please hand your tickets to the receptionist immediately outside this building. You can check out, you can check in for your flight there. Thank you for your service. Talk. Ah, those people just now were so pushy. I mean, it is a sample of the engine go, uh, uh, it is a sample of the engine going into the high-speed cruiser RSA, but sheesh, I can understand them getting so worked up, but it's it's not finished yet. Watch the seven. Ooh, thanks for that, bad boy.
Hmm. How much worth are... That is already 144. At some point I'm probably gonna farm Mira like that. Those two just now, they looked really deadly serious. It seems like they had a fairly high rank too. I wonder who they were. That was scary. Now I can buy my ticket. Oh man, screaming and fighting in a place like this. How pathetic. I wish people could be well, more, more well-mannered. All right, enough funny voices. I'm trying here, I'm trying. Hello and welcome. Will you be flying with us today? If you are, you will need to check in and present your tickets. Once we checked in, once we check in, we should stick around and wait for the ship. Sure you got everything you need? Very well. Please sign these papers then. Ah, sure. Scratch, scratch. Estelle and her companion finished checking in. Ah, You could have made that dialogue change up. That tells you something. You will not need to answer the question now. Whether Charizard and Estelle actually go to Roland or... Um, or a gate and Estelle actually go to Ruin because I'm fairly certain now that Estelle always goes to the same place because they were too lazy to put a different choice of dialogue here because it says Estelle and her companion not Estelle and a gate. Thank you everything is in order. Please wait in the harbor area for the next airship arrival. Okay. Right then, let's find a good bench and wait for the next ship. Airliner Linde. I have to say that is about my favorite melody of this, well, game. A melody that I will probably hardly ever forget. That's okay. Ah, what a nice day! The tourists gotta be flooding the streets in ruin if the weather's like this there. Maybe. They got bigger things heating the place up than tourism, though. Other than tourism? What do you mean? The election for the new mayor. Apparently there's two popular candidates to replace old Dalemore. So it's like an actual fight of an election? Neat! And thinking about it, I guess it is about time, huh? They can't just let the mayor's office sit empty. Yeah, whole thing's been a, been a bit of a mess ever since you guys blew that case wide open. I heard about that what you guys did from John. Ah, <laughs> yeah, after you left, Joshua and Chloe worked on that. Well, we had some help from a reporter too, and the actual arrest was done by Lieutenant Schwartz of the Royal Army. Heh, even better, you're smart enough to see it wasn't all just you. By Chloe, though, you mean the girl in the uniform, right? A.K.A. Princess Claudia? Man, that blew my friggin' mind when I heard that in the castle. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. You know, I haven't seen Chloe since the birthday festival. Or Oliver, I guess. For better or for worse. And not just them, Tita too. And Zane. I told Tita and, uh, and her old Foggy... Foggy? Foggy about what was up with you. I figured they are, they'd worry too much if they were kept in the dark. Oh, thanks, Agate. Yeah, well, you'd better send them a letter soon. Or meet them in person or whatever. They miss you. Oh, and Zane went back to Calvert after the festival. He said, you, he said to give you his best. Ah, I see. 
I would I, I wish I could have said goodbye. As for the princess, I think I heard she was back at the Janus Academy. We'll be in ruin for a while, so I think we can find some time to drop in and say hi, at least. Yeah, you're right. Hehe. <laughs> what, did I say something funny? Oh, no, not really. I was just thinking. You're a lot more thoughtful than you look, Agate. You even offered to let me do some shopping before we left the capital. Thoughtful? I'm not. I, I, I mean, I am, but... Ah, forget it. Whatever, I'm gonna go take a nap in my seat while until we arrive. Don't get so absorbed in wandering around that you forget to get off at ruin. Don't get so absorbed in your stupid sleep that you forget to get off in ruin. Agate, you really do try hard sometimes. Anyway, I think I'll take the... I, I think I'll take his, his, his advice. Time for a bit of looking around before we arrive. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and I hope I will uh, I will see you in the next episode as well. Until then, bye bye.